Hello, my name's Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about the 4% rule, which is widely used for retirement and is also used by people looking to retire early to figure out how much money they'll need invested to retire early. I was doing some research for myself because I was trying to figure out exactly how much money I would need to retire early. And I actually came up with a few issues and problems with the 4% rule, particularly if you're looking to retire early. So today's video, I'm gonna share with you those three main issues that I found. So if you've clicked on this video, you probably already know what the 4% rule is. It was established back in 1994 by William Bengen, Basically, this research and this rule shows that on your first year of retirement, you can withdraw 4% of your portfolio and hopefully that means that for the next 30 years, you will not run out of money. So say, for example, you want to retire on £40,000, that would mean that you would need a pot of £1 million to retire and use the 4% rule. So as I said, when I was doing my research, I found a few issues with the 4% rule and I found these problems specifically in a research paper that Vanguard produced. And this research paper was called Fuel for Fire, updating the 4% rule for early retirees. So this specifically focuses on people who are looking to retire early and potentially why the 4% rule doesn't work for them. So I'm gonna share with you lots of stats and facts in this video, and I'll also link the paper in its entirety below just in case you want to check it out. So the first major problem that I picked up from this paper was that the 4% rule was developed for someone with a retirement horizon of 30 years. However, for people doing the FIRE movement or people potentially looking to retire early, they might be retired for a lot longer than 30 years. So this study looks specifically at people who are wanting to retire early and be in retirement for 30 or 40 or even 50 years and looking at their chance of success of not running out of money. So I've included an illustration here which shows that if you have a retirement horizon of 30 years and you're using the 4% rule, you have an 81.9% chance of success. However, if you're looking to retire for 40 years and you're still using the 4% rule, you've only got a 53.7% chance of success. And then if you're looking to be retired for 50 years, so say if you are retiring when you're 40 and then you need the money until you're around 90, the chance of that being successful is only 36%. So the results assume an initial wealth of $1 million at retirement and a starting withdrawal of $40,000 or 4%. So just in case you're interested for this illustration, the asset allocation is 50% US stocks and 50% US bonds. So your investment portfolio for your retirement might look quite different to that, but that is what is being used in these illustrations. So essentially what it's showing here is if you have the asset allocation, you might need a bigger retirement pot if you are planning to retire for 40 years or 50 years, for example. So there are some changes that you could make to your portfolio. I won't go into too much detail in this video, but you could change, for example, your asset allocation and have potentially fewer bonds and a higher amount of stocks. Um, you could also change the diversity of this portfolio, which we'll go into in point three. And then finally, you could obviously save more money for retirement. Okay, so the second big problem with this calculation and with the research for the 4% rule is that it doesn't account for investing fees. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, I've got a few videos where I talk about the importance of investment fees and finding providers that have the best investment fees. So Bengen assumes that the investors' returns are the same as those for the historical market indexes for stocks and bonds, but there are costs associated with investing, such as mutual funds, expense ratios. You must take these costs into account to determine the probability of success of a portfolio in retirement as they obviously reduce investors' net returns. Obviously, as fees compound over time, they have a huge, huge impact on the amount of money and the chance of success you're going to have with the 4% rule working for you in retirement. So again, I've included an illustration here and we're looking again at a 50 year retirement. So we're looking at an early retirement here. So if there was no fees at all, the chance of success is 36% 
as we talked about before. But with a 20 BPS fee, you are looking at a 28.8% chance of this working out for you. So 20 BPS would work out as a 0.2% fee overall, which is on the lower end. Then with a 60 BPS fee, so a 0.6% fee, you're looking at 16.5% chance of success. And then with a 100 BPS, so a 1% fee, you're only looking at an 8.6% chance of the probability of success at these different fee levels. So obviously this really shines a light on how important fees are to your chance of success of retiring early. So it's really important when you're putting together a plan for retiring that you consider your fees because they can make such a huge, huge difference to the pot of money that you end up with and you're able to retire with. So when you're considering this, you should be looking at platform fees, which are vastly different um, across different ISA platforms and then also different self-invested personal pensions platforms and then also you should be looking at the fees of the investments you're making. Now Vanguard where I've taken this illustration from is very very good for having very low fees for their ETFs and their index funds so that is why they are very popular whereas if you're looking at investing in actively managed funds or trusts then the fees can certainly be higher. I personally do choose to invest in a few actively managed trusts and funds as well as ETFs and index funds, and they do have higher fees of around 0.5 to 1%. They have produced returns for me beyond their index and beyond their benchmark, but you do have to be so, so careful when choosing actively managed funds and trusts, because you can see here what an impact fees do have on retirement and specifically in this example an early retirement. And then finally moving on to problem three with the 4% rule and that is failure to diversify. So diversification is a powerful strategy for managing portfolio risk. When calculating the safe withdrawal rates for retirees, however, Bengen considered only US stock and bond allocations international stocks and bonds are a source of additional diversification. So obviously in his study, the only stocks and bonds that were considered were US stocks and bonds. So there was no global diversity within these calculations. Vanguard's research has shown that global diversification can reduce a portfolio's volatility. Vanguard's most recent 10-year capital market forecasts indicate that international stocks are likely to outperform US stocks, though as always this cannot be guaranteed. Essentially what Vanguard is saying here is that potentially if you are looking to retire early, potentially it's worth looking at diversifying into global stocks and not focusing simply on the US stock market. And then I'm including a nice little illustration here which again is using that 50 year retirement horizon. So if you want to retire very early and be retired for 50 years, then the probability of success by diversification level. So domestic only, so just those US stocks and bonds, you've got a 36% chance of success. And then if you diversify into domestic and international stocks and bonds, then you would be looking at a 56.3% probability of success when using the 4% rule. So I like to have a nice globally diverse portfolio. So yes, I do have probably the majority of my investments in the US stock market, um, but I also am invested in Asia, the UK, Europe, Canada, Latin America. So I like to ensure that I have a nice global diverse portfolio. And um, so if you are looking to retire early, then Vanguard thinks that this is potentially something that you could be looking at and diversifying your portfolio across the world instead of just focusing on US stocks and US bonds. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. As I said, I have linked the full research paper below in case you want to check it out in a bit more detail. They've also included a couple of other risks that might be worth considering as well. But for me, I pulled out these three as the biggest ones um, and the ones that I felt were most important for me personally. Um, but you might find some little nuggets of information that are interesting specifically for you. Um, so I wish you all the best with your investing and your retirement plan. 
hands. This I found really interesting for me personally, so I hope you found it interesting too. As always, I'm not an expert. I am just a DIY investor, learning about investing as I go and doing my own research. So if you are looking for specific retirement advice and pension advice, then definitely do seek out the help of a professional rather than just listening to me. Um, but I hope you found this video interesting anyway, and thank you so very much for taking the time to watch. Bye-bye.